I can't tell you how uh, special it is for all of us and how excited everybody back home is uh, to be a part of this exhibit, so thank you. Um, before coming to Pixar, I used to live and work in Los Angeles, and some of my favorite uh, favorite places to go was always the uh, sort of prop rooms that all the studios had that were amazing places. They were a lot like, you know, the last shot in uh, Raiders of Lost Ark, that big warehouse where, you know, who knows what is in all those boxes. Well, there are these rooms on the movie studio lots where you can walk in there and there are props from the last 80 years of movies. And you walk in there and you look at all the stuff and like, I think I saw that in one movie. And it's just all there, and uh, I could get lost in the, the Disney on the live action lot, their, their prop room for hours, just looking at all this stuff. One of the, I think, misconceptions about Pixar is everybody, uh, I, I sometimes get asked about our digital backlot of stuff that uh, we either already have or repurpose from other movies, and uh, digital backlot, well, there's no room or virtual room in the computer where, where somebody can go kind of Look in all oh, that lamp. We want to use this in Toy Story 2, so let's reuse it. Everything has to be designed from scratch. Uh, even in a movie like Toy Story 2 that uses all the same sets and characters, it still all had to be rebuilt and articulated from scratch because the technology that we were building and using had advanced. So I think that's one of one of the main things that um, our part of this exhibit was about was to sort of show everything is designed from the ground up, whether it be the story or the main character. Also, the lamp that's on the table around the corner that you can't even see. Um, another aspect of the design is uh, the maquettes, which you can see up there. Uh, one of the interesting things that, that we like to do at Pixar is work really quickly. And, and I learned this the most in 2D animation, where we could draw a character, a design, and there was so much expression and personality in the very rough sketch. Well, once it was animated, the rough animators would sort of block it out. And then the cleanup animators, well, their job was to sort of trace it over with very clean lines so that it could go to the ink and paint department. But just by that drawing being cleaned up, it sort of lost some of its expression. That scribble that can indicate an entire mood of, of a character would just disappear. So there in the battle with the technology at Pixar is one of the hardest things uh, we face because we try to make our characters so warm and believable and yet the computer is, is just the opposite of all that. The computer likes to make things look like they're made of plastic, like they're weightless and about this big. So when we want to make movies about characters and tell stories about characters about where they live in big places and they're, they're warm and believable and you can look into their soul through their eyes, we really have to battle that in the computer. And that's where design uh, really at Pixar becomes one of the most important parts of the process because up until the movie is lit in about the or the shot is lit probably about six months before the movie comes out for four years it's kind of this theoretical thing that all we can do is look back to that drawing or design or storyboard that was done four years ago and we have to latch on to that. Um, another aspect of uh, sort of I guess a philosophy of design that we have is believability through caricature caricaturization where uh, we're making animated movies. And some stories need to be told in 2D animation. Some stories need to be told in 3D, some in stop motion, and some not in animation at all. They need to be live action movies. So in animation, the last thing we want to do is really imitate life exactly. We want to grab those little pieces that you respond to, like a color, a shape, which really a common experience, we can all feel it together and not bombard you with every realistic thing. I think if you watch The Incredibles, one of Brad, Teddy, and Tony Ficilli's ideas of the design of the characters was that each character in the movie could be reduced to a uh, single shape that would identify them. Uh, and also the approach to, now you talk about a 3D animated movie with 3D sets, realistic textures, all the design of the characters began like this. Teddy Newton doing collages, collages where he was grabbing uh, images out of magazines and sort of creating shapes. And it was fascinating because I, we used to all do this in school when we were little kids. And, but through just kind of getting a feel for a character in these basic shapes, they still communicated all the attitudes that the characters fully realized would have. And if you look at the characters in the movie, are they realistic looking? Are the pores in their skin all there? Do they, are, are they, are, is it motion capture? No, it's very stylized and caricatured. 
And if you look at the final uh, image of E in the film, I mean, that really is it. And this preceded that by five years. These are the designs of some of the uh, sets for The Incredibles. Again, it's Teddy grabbing textures out of magazines and just sort of uh, uh, gluing them uh, together and forming something. And it was kind of daunting for the set department and the lighters at Pixar to take this and, well, how do we turn that into an actual 3D set? Uh, but they did a fantastic job. A lot of this, you know, the colors, I mean, if, it, it's funny, if you look at the final set for the living room in the Parr home, this could almost be considered a model packet. The fireplace is there, the rug is there, and those are all the colors in the room. And uh, it costs nothing other than Teddy buying about six magazines. Also designs for superheroes. Anyway, uh, again, design for us is not photo real. Uh, in The Incredibles, if you look at the super suits and the textures of the skin, it's actually pretty cartoony looking. There's an absence of this photo realistic qualities. We don't sometimes want to see it the same way. We don't want to see motion capture in animated characters. Um, another aspect that design really helps us is uh, in our storytelling. There's, uh, Pixar sort of has a mantra, story, story, story. Well, design sort of, uh, as, as, re as ridiculous as the world may be, design actually gives these worlds a little bit of credibility. And in the case of One Man Band, which is Pixar's uh, latest short film, when John Lasseter heard the very first pitch for this film, uh, one of the things he said was, uh, I, want to make, I want you guys to make it like these guys are really playing music. Uh, John knew that Mark and I were big uh, music score buffs, and so he wanted uh, us to have very believable characters, and for us to believe that two guys are competing for a little girl's coin, and these are street musicians. And Mark and I took that note, but we weren't really sure how we were going to solve it. Well, we didn't solve it. Ronnie Del Carmen solved it by uh, creating these uh, and designing these musical rigs that even though, if, if you look at it, it's kind of ridiculous, ridiculous that these things could actually produce music. Uh, but we had an orchestra of 38 people, and that music sounded pretty big, but we had to create these rigs that it was believable that only one person was playing it. And so these were some of the designs that uh, Ronnie came up with. And again, back to what I opened with, so much of the design you never see in the final film because everything has to be designed. And this was, I think, my favorite image that I've seen of any model packet or anything uh, from Pixar. Ronnie drew this. It was a model packet for this mandolin that one of the characters wears in the film. And I, I saw that, and it, lo it looked like the Star Destroyer coming over my head in a movie or something. It just looked like a spaceship. It was fantastic. But all these little gears, all these little pulleys and stuff, they all actually worked. And they gave our character uh, a bit of be uh, be believability, more so than he would have had without this level of design. I'll just show you uh, some more of this. Down to the face and articulation, how our characters uh, act. Again, none of our characters are motion captured, so animators have to go in and put all those little points in the skin to how when you smile, well, there's about 45 places your face moves when you smile. And an articulator has to go in there and put all those points in. Well, he can't do that without the designer. It's such a back and forth uh, sort of tennis match between the both of them to get the design, but also to get the design to move and act. Again, this image, um, I'm going to close with this. If upstairs we have these uh, sculptures or sculpts, the little gray uh, maquettes of all of our characters, they actually serve a, a purpose for us. One is uh, Ronnie did this sort of character rotation so we could see what our, one of our main little characters looked like from the side or from the front or from the, from the back. And, but you can kind of cheat when, when you're drawing. And so we build these 3D maquettes so that before we ever get into the digital world or the computer world, we can just hold this thing and kind of look at, does the design hold up from this angle or, or, or this angle? It sort of puts that tactile, hands-on aspect of movie making that computers and technology sort of try to beat out of it a little bit. It puts that hands-on um, aspect of it back in it because we can sit there and look at the, cl the clay is still wet and we're thinking, well, let's do this and push this in. And it's really uh, amazing and a lot of fun. And that all happens before it ever goes into the computer. Um, I'll close with this. Uh, it's, it's always been a joke that, um, that Pixar designs everything even underneath the table that you never will see. But I can honestly tell you that that's absolutely true, that underneath the table, just in case we put the camera there, we'll, uh, we'll get designed. So 
Anyways, thank you very much.